When preparing a document, we will often have tables of information, and in LaTeX, it's not always straightforward to create rather fancy looking tables. So, there may be some situations, such as if you're using the R software, where you may want to make use of functions to automatically generate the LaTeX code that you need for your table. This will save you time, but if you're in a position where you're going to build up the table from scratch, there are various commands, environments, and so on that you can make use of to create your tables. So, we're going to look at three reasonably straightforward examples. The first one is data from the IMF, which is looking at GDP for the 10 largest economies in 2009. So we've got a table with two columns and 11 rows. So we're making use of the tabular environment. So begin tabular and end tabular. And then after the begin tabular, we here specify the column alignments and any vertical lines to appear between columns. So here the first column is left justified and the second column is right justified and the vertical bars indicates to the left of the first column, in between the first and second column, and to the right of the second column. We then use the slash H line. This indicates we want to draw a horizontal line from to the left to the right of the table. We then move on to the next line, or the first line rather, of the table. And here we've got country, so that's the heading that's going to appear in the first column followed by an ampersand to indicate we're moving into the next column of the table and then here we've got the title GDP and then the units. So this double slash indicates we're moving on to a new line in the table and here we're doing another H line to box off the title part. So then for these 10 rows here we've got the name of the country, ampersand and then the GDP in millions of dollars. So if we have a look at the table in the document. Here we see we've got our two columns, left justified, center justified, and then the horizontal lines at the places we put them in, and by default the vertical lines stretch the extent of the whole table. So this is a pretty straightforward example, so we'll move on to some other examples. So if we look at the most recent Barclays Premiership table, which I've managed to spell incorrectly, then we'll see that on the 18th of December the teams were arranged in the order given in this table. So it's slightly more complicated than the previous table but not massively. So we've got five columns which we've centered so that's why we've got the five C's but here I haven't put any vertical lines. Instead what I've done is do a double H line underneath the title line and then similarly once we go outside the top four so fifth place position, the double H line to show the Champions League positions, and then I've put another line underneath the fifth position, which is currently Tottenham, and similarly a double H line between the 17th and 18th position for the relegation. So as we've got five columns, we've got four ampersands on each line, splitting the data into separate columns in our table. So we have a look at the example here. So as I specified, everything is centered and then we've got um, various bits of information. Position on the table, team name, games played, goal difference and total points scored. So the last example is looking at World Bank data, so it's indicators taken for five countries in APEC. So we're just taking two indicators here, the total population and GDP. But what I'm going to show here is just simply how you can stretch information across multiple columns in the table. So the table starts with the begin tabula as we've seen so far. Now we've got five columns, the first one is left justified and the other four are centered. So then we move on to the next line, we don't have anything in the first position so it's left blank, ampersand and then this command multi-column. With multi-column we specify the number of columns to stretch over, the alignment within those joined cells and the text that appears in them. So we've got two instances of multi-columns and then, as you'll see below on the next line, we've got data for 2008 and 2009, which is why we stretched our title over two columns, and then the information for five of the APEC nations. So as you'll see here, the title is stretched across the 2008 and 2009 columns of data, and similarly for the GDP. There are more advanced examples that we consider if we want to get a more 
complicated table in our document. 